All right, folks, in this video, which is an excerpt from a recent live stream I did with my buddy Chuck, KK6USY Ham Radio Adventures, we talk about common mode current chokes, also known as balance, and how to use them and why to use them for your ham radio antenna system. Stay tuned and we'll get started. Let PCBWay.com help you on your next project. PCBWay.com's InstaQuote will help you make sure you understand the costs and components required for your project. People from all over the world, from small makers to big manufacturers, take advantage of PCBWay.com. You should too. PCBWay.com also has a module store that will allow you to order the tools and components that you need to make sure your project's a success. So the next thing we have on here for mistakes that uh, are made with antennas and amateur radio is not using a CMC or an RFI choke. And what I put on here, a lot of times you'll see people be like, ain't no such thing as CMC, ain't no such thing as RFI. I can't see it, I can't measure it, I can't smell it, and I can't taste it. And what I'm here to tell you is, is that it's real and it's bad. And what we don't want is RFI or common mode currents coming into our ham shack. So when you think about the transmission of a signal from an amateur radio, it is using AC current or differential mode current, which is equal and opposing. So you have a certain amount of current going out, you have a certain amount of current coming back in. And we use things like a balance choke, which will let that pass uh, because it's going in different directions. It's not causing a problem. In a balance choke, what will happen is, is that if you have extra <clears throat> current on one side, either in or out, and that switches back and forth, the choke introduces a level of impedance, which really just chokes that out. It stops it from passing through. If you don't do that, what can happen is, is you can get incorrect SWR readings because you're getting extra currents on the outside of your coaxial shield. And that current comes in and then hits your SWR meter and is measured as current, just like it would reflected current. So that's a little bit of a problem. Um, the other thing is, is that when you start to run electrical currents on the outside shield of your coaxial cable, it generates noise. It can pick up noise from other things in your environment. And it can also radiate noise that can cause interference to like TVs and radios and all this other stuff. So it's a really good idea to put chokes, uh, we mentioned earlier, at the feed point of your antenna and then at your, at your radio. It's also a good idea if you're running really long lengths of coax to put one, that what they really say is to put one every quarter wave of the lowest frequency that you intend to operate on. Now I run hundred feet of coax. I don't have any chokes in the middle of it, but I always choke my antennas to feed point. And then I have a choke coming in from the egress point at my house and before the signal comes into my antenna tuner. And Actually, uh, it's I, just I, I never, I never thought about, it, but I do also, I have, uh, the CMCs for my antennas. Yeah. Everything, everything coming through that inside the house here. So I think we covered the next one, which was turn your feline into an antenna element. And the other one is, is that some of the CMC can come in and it can cause shocks in the ham shack because you have current that is seeking ground and, you know, you touch a radio and you can get a little bit of a bite there. The other thing is, is it can traverse your equipment. So a lot of times what you'll see is somebody operating FT8 on a radio like the IC705, which seems extra susceptible to this. But when you transmit and your laptop's connected to your 705 via the USB-C cable, a lot of times what will happen is, is that your WSJTX app will freeze up and, and will lose communication with the radio. And what's happening is, is that when you're transmitting, you're getting extra current back on the shield part of your the outer shield of your coaxial cable. It's making its way into the radio and it's looking for a path to ground. And it's taking that USB connection and trying to grind it, ground itself through your laptop connection. So what a lot of folks will do is they'll actually put a choke on that USB cable. I fixed mine by using a Wi-Fi app. So I just connected my radio over Wi-Fi, but it's just something to consider there. <laughs> and then it can, I just mentioned, can cause mayhem with other shack equipment. So it can be noise or failures, like your laptop may fail uh, or freeze up. You can cause noise like on your headphones. So like one of the things that uh, all my stuff's connected together through my mixer, and I had to choke my headphone line because I was getting CMC in through my mixer and it was causing some noise when I would transmit. Does a choke go before the remote antenna switch or after the remote antenna switch when it enters in the house? So if you think about your remote, thanks for asking, Don, it's a good question. So if you think about your remote antenna switch, I think I have one sitting around here somewhere. It'll take me too long to find it. 
but I might have three or four antennas and they're all connected together and on the switch. Now, even though you're switching your antenna, uh, the rotator, that's really only switching the center, con uh, center connector of your coaxial cable. They all have a shared ground. So when common mode current comes in, it is running across that ground and it's looking for a way to come in. Personally, I would put them on the antenna feed point as they come into the switch. And I probably would actually stick one after switch. Like I mentioned, I go a little overboard with the chokes. But if you don't choke mine's, them before. Mine's before. Yes, mine's and if you don't before. choke them before, that common mode current is going to come in and it's going to run through all of that, uh, that shared ground that you have with that switch. Yeah, that mine goes you. into my, most of my antennas go into my tuner. And then before my tune, before the tuner, I have the, uh, the CMC or, or yeah, the so I have, yeah, I have a tuner that has two antennas on it and I have a choke on each one of those antenna points. Yeah. Okay. I think that one's going to finish up this particular slide. I don't see any other questions in there, but I'm not doing a hey, good job of paying attention. Ape and I've been talking about this a little bit and, and we're, we're, we're thinking about doing Tuesdays like a half hour at the most. And if you guys, are interested in stuff like this and be a little bit more technical than we get and it'll be like a subject like it is tonight if you guys like that put a one in the uh the chat there just kind of let us know if it's worth doing for you guys that's what we're doing it for so and we get yes, instant gratification it. tonight if you if you do so <laughs> right <laughs> um yeah this is uh like we did the one the other day with my, on my channel we're going to switch back and forth so it'll be one of our two channels here so yeah. And we'll try to, it may, it may not be every week, but it'll be. So Don say, remember, he has times. a remote antenna switch outside his house. I would definitely put a choke in front of both of the antenna yeah. connections or as many as you have on there on that switch. Yeah. Like I said, I'd probably put one afterwards too. It's not going to hurt anything. Awesome. All um, right. <clears throat> do you have anything else? I think that was the last, was that the last one? No, I don't. I got a couple, I got a couple more slides. Okay. I don't have anything okay. else on this one. All right. Well, hold on a second. Liberty Cave saying, what about chokes on coax going out to remote antenna tuners? The ones that you put at the base of your antenna, does it interfere with the signals on the coax or uh, adjusting the tuner? I would put one in between the antenna tuner and the antenna feed point. Now, depending on how much coaxial cable you have there, I may put one at either line, but I wouldn't put one after the tuner. I would put it all the way back in the shack at the radio uh, feed point at that, at, if that was the case. I don't have a remote antenna tuner, although I want one. I don't have one. 